Chapter 5 review is entitled uh, Fats, but I've called it lipids because uh, lipid is a diver lipids are a diverse group of uh, biological molecules that don't mix well with water, and that includes fats and oils, and most of the chapter deals with fats and oils. But the first part talks about types of lipids. Now, triglycerides are fats and oils. Uh, they are going to be the fats and oils in the foods that they come in, and that's also how we store them. Now, the basic structure of a triglyceride is that it's made of a glycerol and three fatty acids. Now, there's many kinds of fats and oils, and you've heard of most of them. Saturated fats, polyunsaturated fats, monounsaturated fats, trans fats, omega-3 fats. They're all triglycerides. Now, they differ in the structure of the fatty acids. Be sure to use the pictures in your book. Now, it is beyond the scope of this course to memorize molecular structures, but it kind of helps to look at them to know what is going on. Saturated means full. So here we have a fatty acid, okay, up here. The triglyceride will have three of them, okay? Now, this carbon chain can be of any length, but, you know, I just drew it for this purpose of, of this lump. But notice how it is full of hydrogens. It cannot hold any more hydrogens than it is holding. So this is a saturated fatty acid. Now an unsaturated fatty acid is one that is missing hydrogens in one or more locations. If it is missing hydrogens in one location, it would be monounsaturated. If it is missing hydrogens in two or more locations, it would be polyunsaturated. Here shows you uh, a point of unsaturation, an area where hydrogens are missing. So this drawing would be that of a monounsaturated fatty acid. I could add more. They could be in any location. That's why there's so many varieties of triglycerides. Now, some rules of thumb. Generally speaking, you can tell saturated fats by looking at them in room temperature. Saturated fats tend to be solids at room temperature unsaturated fats tend to be liquids or oils at room temperature. Uh, the exception would be the so-called tropical oils, such as palm kernel oil, coconut oil, and, and so forth. Uh, they're liquids, but they're saturated uh, but because the chains are short. Now, another rule of thumb, saturated fats tend to be more stable, chemically stable, better shelf life, and hold up better under repetitive or high heat cooking. Okay, So for those reasons, uh, for many years, oils have been hydrogenated. Hydrogenation means to add hydrogens back to an unsaturated fat to make it more saturated in order to thicken it up or make it more heat stable. Um, but there are two drawbacks. Saturated fats are less healthy and trans fats often are a byproduct of hydrogenation. Now what do they mean by trans fats? Well, See this point of unsaturation. The hydrogens are on the same side. This is what a normal point of unsaturation looks like. And in reality, it bends the chain, which makes it a liquid at room temperature. But this one has the hydrogens on the opposite side. So this structure is called trans, and it won't bend the chain. So here is a trans fatty acid, which behaves like a saturated fatty acid. And both these kinds of fatty acids are considered less healthy for us. Now, your book also talks about essential fatty acids, and be sure to read through the notes on that. Now, the essential fatty acids are listed as linoleic acid and linolenic acid. Linoleic acid is one of the omega-6, and again, that has to do with the position of those double bonds. And linolenic acid is an omega-3. Now, omega-3 fats um, such as EPA and DHA are also found in fish oils, and they're considered very healthy. So this is just an overview of triglycerides, but there are other kinds of lipids besides triglycerides. Phospholipids make up cell membranes. Be sure to read the notes on the details there. They're not considered essential nutrients because your liver makes all of the phospholipids you need, and pretty much they're going to be in everything you eat anyway. Sterols, also known as steroids, are made of fused carbon rings. Examples include cholesterol, plant sterols, uh, vitamin D, sex hormones, and the corticosteroid hormones of, from the adrenal gland. So these are all examples of lipids, although most of the chapter deals with 
uh, triglycerides. Now, why do we need them? First and foremost, energy. One gram of fat yields nine kilocalories of energy for energy metabolism. That was from chapter one. What do we do with them? Well, we digest them. Remember what was said in the digestive system chapter concerning the use of the liver, bile, emulsification, lipase enzymes, and so forth. We absorb them, but because they don't mix well with water, they have to be transported by lipoproteins. So uh, LDL, low density lipoproteins, they transport cholesterol. They're considered the bad cholesterol. HDL is considered the good cholesterol, high density lipoproteins. The VLDLs transport triglycerides in the blood. So these are lipoproteins that transport these in the blood. And of course, there are normal and abnormal amounts to them when somebody gets a lipid blood test. We also store uh, fat in adipose tissue as an energy storage. And this concludes part one of this review.